So the future this system offers us is a complete disaster. The coronavirus pandemic is worsening. The policies of officials in the US have been clear, prioritizing profits over people's lives. Let those in prisons, on the streets, and in nursing homes die. They have decided that no more effort will be put into containing the virus. They're willing to sentence tens of thousands more to death. The push to open the economy is a blatant damnation of all of our lives, especially for workers. On the economic front, we're facing a crisis far worse than we've ever seen before. There are millions without jobs and a time limit on unemployment benefits. Historic numbers of small, business, small businesses will be wiped out with people losing their life savings within a matter of months. States have lost revenue and their response is to impose budget cuts on necessary public services like transportation, healthcare, and education. The environmental crisis is at a turning point. We're living through the hottest year ever recorded. Billions of people's lives are at risk as they struggle to survive due to climate disruption and the mass displacement it causes. Ecosystems are collapsing far faster than predicted and all of human existence is threatened with extinction. This system is completely unwilling and unable to address the climate emergency and we cannot wait for this to be solved by those who have created this crisis to begin with. We would be waiting forever. The global pandemic is helping accelerate nationalist and military tensions as well, with skirmishes on borders becoming more common. These tensions reflect underlying forces that are pushing up against each other. We don't know when they could explode into a war, but it's a really very real threat. Amidst all of this, the expectations are that we will return to normal eventually. Politicians, corporations, the media, every spokesperson of this society tells us we'll be returning to restaurants, gyms, concerts, and all of our normal activities. We're supposed to go back to school in the fall, whether it's online or in bare bone classrooms while wearing masks. The expectation is that we will return to school and just hop back on the path to graduation, then on to find a job, all the while acting like there is some future worth striving for. What's the use of working so hard to integrate into a society that only offers us a nightmare? The future they have planned offers us nothing except a threat to all of our lives. We have no choice but to fight it. The past few weeks have revealed um, how possible this is. Massive protests have sprung up all over the country and the world. There have been demonstrations in small towns of mostly white people that have never had protests for black lives. In larger cities, huge numbers of people have taken action against the violence of this system. The pandemic only intensified the, in the enduring problems of this system. And the blatant murder of George Floyd was the last straw. These protests were an immediate response to a crisis. Tens of thousands of people were unwilling to let the government get away with doing nothing in response to the murder of George Floyd. They are actions that show for any change we want, it's up to us to fight for it. And after two weeks of protests happening every single day, local, state, and even federal politicians were forced to respond. At each level, they made superficial gestures of police reform as an attempt to get protests to stop. These small reforms have been impossible for decades, and now, because of the protests, they happened in a matter of weeks. In a similar way, the pandemic has revealed to hundreds of thousands of people that, this, that the only ones we can rely on is ourselves. It was workers who decided that risking their lives with unsafe working conditions wasn't worth it. Bus drivers changed how we enter bus buses as a precaution. They didn't wait for, a different, for different safety protocols to be handed down from management. It was nurses and other healthcare workers who tried to stockpile protective equipment before the pandemic and created their own when it wasn't provided. It was meatpacking workers who refused to come to work and risk getting sick after hundreds of their coworkers contracted the virus. In communities around the country as well, some mutual aid has been organized by volunteers, knowing that there will be no official agency that provides meals or delivers groceries to people who need these services. 
Since the beginning of the pandemic, people are seeing who is essential in our society. The crisis has exposed who does the work that we all rely on in our daily lives. It couldn't be clearer that the system cannot protect us. Our safety and well being is up to us to protect, and the only way we can do this is collectively. The immediate collective responses have the potential to evolve. From the protest and workplace and community organizing efforts, there can be new ways of organizing that go further than these in initial reactions could. And critically, new layers of the population can begin to participate. In Minneapolis and other cities, with the initiation from just a few drivers, all of the bus operators refused to drive in service of police arrest. We could imagine efforts like this evolving. Bus drivers could choose what they wanted to drive for. They could decide to dispatch more buses to run more frequently or organize routes that hit neighborhoods that are underserved. If organized, this power could be tapped into on a much broader level to fight for all the things we need. In some places, people have taken over hotels to house people. We could imagine efforts like these spreading as well. Those struggles could become tied with others. If organized, people could show up to defend any attempt to evict someone or go further and collectively reallocate empty housing to those who need it. If organized, we can stand up to the attacks of the system. With the growing number of crises, we'll have to decide how we can fight back against the immediate attacks. We'll also have to organize and strategize for how we build stronger movements and collectively solve the issues we experience. But most importantly, we have to remember that the, what the recent protests have shown us, that the method to defend ourselves and accomplish any sort of change does not depend on the politicians. They'll promise the moon and the stars if they can get people to give up struggling. Instead, our future has always depended on what we do, on regular people organizing and fighting for what we want. We know the future they have in store for us. A movement that can defend against the attacks of the system has the potential to go even further. Working people hold a tremendous power because we do all of the work to make this system run. If we can get organized, we can do more than just defend ourselves. We can get rid of the capitalist system that threatens all of us. These are the real possibilities before us. But we cannot wait for this deepening and spreading of movements to happen spontaneously. Nothing of that scale will happen spontaneously. It will take people who decide to dedicate their lives to organizing for this kind of revolutionary change. This is the choice in front of all of us. We can choose to reject the option laid out to us, to toe the line and hope things to, will be improved. Instead, we can look towards the crises ahead and the social movements that will arise and answer the pressing questions in front of us today. How will we organize? What do we need to do to be successful in transforming the world? What world are we trying to create? And what role do I play in all of this? We can choose to tie our futures to the vast majority of humanity and engage in the fight of our lives. It's important to remember that these protests can't last forever. Even if they did, they still wouldn't be enough to end the system. As the protests shrink in size or there's temporary pauses in people taking to the streets, this does not mean that we have to stop our efforts and lose hope. This is when it becomes even more important for some people to take up the work of continuing to organize with those around them at their workplaces and in their neighborhoods and schools. Efforts like these can work towards building a real organization of regular people with activists in different workplaces, schools, and cities. This can be an organization that doesn't just fight to protect ourselves and doesn't just fight for small but important reforms. Most importantly, it fights for revolutionary change, because if we don't get rid of capitalism, none of these problems will go away. And when the movements start to gain momentum again, an organization like this can offer a different perspective. There's only one in group in society that does the work of providing a revolutionary perspective, of organizing with revolution in mind, of working towards that goal, and that's revolutionaries. No one else is going to do this work for us. To conclude, we're facing a turning point for humanity. The course 
the capitalist system is on is accelerating towards increasing misery and destruction for all people. A new course is opening up in this country and around the world. Which direction we take will be up to us and the choices we make.